Rahim. Welcome to lecture four on digital signal processing. محاضرة اليوم بعنوان classifications of sequences. أول نوع من الكلاسيفيكيشن راح ندرسه اللي هو بناء على أو based on symmetry based on symmetry okay let's define what is a conjugate symmetric sequence a sequence x of n is called a conjugate symmetric sequence if x of n is equal to x complex conjugate of minus n. So this is the superscript, the star superscript here means that you are doing the conjugate of the complex sequence x of n. Minus n is the folding of the sequence. Okay, so this is the definition. If we want to call a conjugate symmetric sequence, we have to check if x of n equals to x complex conjugate of minus n, then this is a conjugate symmetric. Okay? If the sequence is real, إذا كانت السيكونس real sequence, هذا بيعني إنه we have a special case of the upper definition. هذا بيعني إنه x of n equals to x of minus n. وهذا التعريف is the definition of the even sequence. Even sequence. So you have an even sequence. Okay. So this is the first part of the symmetrical based classification. The second one, let's define the conjugate anti-symmetric. So a sequence x of n is called a conjugate anti-symmetric sequence if x of n is equal to minus x complex conjugate of minus n. So here we, that we don't have a minus sign, here we have a minus sign. Okay. Special case of this one, if the sequence, if the sequence is real, so we have x of n equals to minus x of minus n. So if we have a real sequence, we don't have a complex conjugate, and here is the definition of the odd sequence. So we have an odd sequence. So this is an odd sequence. Okay. <clears throat> in general, any complex sequence x of n can be expressed as the sum of 
its conjugate symmetric part x conjugate symmetric of n and its conjugate anti-symmetric part x conjugate anti-symmetric of n. In mathematics, this can be realized as this equation. x of n is made of two parts, the conjugate symmetric of n plus the conjugate anti the conjugate anti-symmetric of n. Okay? Okay. This part can be found as where x conjugate symmetric of n is equal to one half of the addition of x of n plus the complex conjugate of minus n. And x conjugate anti-symmetric of n is equal to one half also x of n minus x complex conjugate of minus. Okay? Okay, let's take an example and see how can we calculate or find if we have a complex sequence, general complex sequence, how can we find the, the two parts of it, the complex, the conjugate symmetric part and the complex anti-symmetric part, the conjugate anti-symmetric part. Okay, so we'll have an example. X of n is equal to zero, one plus j4 minus two plus j3, four minus j2 minus five minus j6 minus j2 and three. And we have the zero here. So we have zero index, minus one, minus two, minus three, one, two, and three. So this is a complex sequence. And what we need here is to determine x conjugate symmetric of n, the conjugate symmetric part of x of n, and the xca of n. Okay. So, let's solve this. Okay. First of all, we will find to find the complex conjugate, the conjugate symmetric part of x of n, we have to find x conjugate of minus n. And to do this operation, we'll do the conjugation first, and then we flip the sequence. So you can do, this is a, a commutative operation. You can do the flipping first and the complex conjugate, or otherwise you can do the complex conjugate and you do the flipping next. Okay, so we will find first x complex conjugate of n. So this is going to be 0, 1 minus j4, minus 2 minus j3, 4 plus j2, minus 5 plus j6, j2, and 3. And this is the complex conjugate of x of n. Every complex part here will be you know, opposite sign of it. You know, plus j4 minus j4 plus j3 minus j3 minus j2 plus j2 and so on. Okay, 
Next, we need to find x complex conjugate of minus n. So we will do the flipping or the time reversal of the sequence. So this is my orientation or my, my vertical uh, pivot that I will do the 180 degrees shift. So we will start with 3. So this is plus 3 at the index 3, n equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. So we'll have this one to be at minus 3. And then we have j2 minus 5 plus j6. The one at the index 0 will stay in its position. Minus 2 minus j3, 1 minus j4, and 0. And we have our index here. Okay. So we are ready now. We got this, this one here. And we will start doing the addition and dividing by 2. So we can go directly and say that xcs of n is equal to <clears throat> the first element will be this one with this one. So 0 plus 3. It's 3 divided by 2. It's 1.5. 1 plus j4 plus j2. 1 plus j6. So this one will be 0.5 plus j3. Okay. And we will continue. This one here is minus 2. Minus 5. It's minus 7 divided by 2. It's minus 3.5. And J3 plus J6, J9, divided by 2, it's J4.5. If we add the index N equals 0 with the index N equals 0 here, you cancel the imaginary part, and you have a real part of 8 divided by 2, it's 4. And we have the 0 here. And we will continue with, mi with minus 3.5 minus J4.5. 0.5 minus j3 and 1.5. So this is the conjugate symmetric part of x of n. The addition of x of n plus x complex conjugate of minus n divided by 2. And this is our answer. The index of minus 3, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay? 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, to find x complex conjugate antisymmetric of n, we'll do the same, except we will subtract those x of n minus x complex conjugate of minus n divided by 2. So 0 minus 3, it's minus 3 divided by 2, it's minus 1.5. And the, the other parts, it's 1 plus j4 minus j2. It's 1 minus, it's 1 plus j2. So the end result is 0.5 plus j. 1.5 minus j, 1.5 minus j2 minus 1.5 minus j, 1.5 minus 0.5 plus j, and the last one is 1.5. And we have our zero here. So you have three elements going here up to minus three, and we are going up to plus three. And those are the two parts of the sequences. Notice that if you add those two, so you have 1.5 minus 1.5, it's equal to 0. If you add the element at minus 2, 0.5 plus 0.5, it's 1. J3 plus J1, it's J4, and so on. The one at the 0 also is the same. Uh, you can notice that the conjugate symmetric part here, the even, the even parts, sorry, the real parts are the same. So this one at n equals 3 and n 
equals minus 3. So this is 1.5 and 1.5. At minus 2, this is 0.5 and 0.5. So the real part is the same, the imaginary part with opposite sign. Uh, for the conjugate antisymmetric, it's the opposite. The, the, real, the imaginary part is the same, but the real part with opposite sign. So if here for n equals minus 3, you have minus 1.5. And here for n equals 3, you have 1.5, and so on for the other elements. Okay? One final comment here on the symmetry classification. If we have a real sequence for a real sequence x of n, x of n can be said to be x even of n plus x odd of n. So x of n is made of two parts and even even part and an odd part, where the even part of n is equal to one half x of n plus x of minus n, and the odd part of n is equal to one half x of n minus x of minus n. Okay, so anyway, the real sequence is usually a special case of the odd sequence. The even is a special case of the conjugate symmetry, and the odd is a special case of the uh, conjugate antisymmetry. Okay, let's move to another classification. whiteboard a little bit. All right. Okay. The next classification is based on periodicity. So we have either, and we can say that the signal could be periodic or aperiodic. Periodic and aperiodic sequences. Okay. A sequence as a definition, sequence x tilde of n, and we will use this tilde above the variable to make sure that you are dealing with a periodic sequence. A sequence x of n, or x tilde of n, satisfying x tilde of n is equal to x tilde of n plus k times capital N, or uppercase N for all n, is called periodic sequence. With a period with the period n, where n is a positive integer and k is any integer.
which means that N should be always positive, capital N is always positive, but K could be positive or negative in integer, which means that you can go up or down with the sequence. So if this one is positive value, you go to the right, sorry, to the left, and if it's negative, you go to the right and so on. Okay, uh, just an example for the periodicity. I'm going to draw here a sequence. Let me just do this. We start from zero, and then we have two, two, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. Two, three. So, I'm trying to Two, one point five, one and point five. If we have here our index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and this is our index n, and this is minus one, minus two, minus three, six, and so on. If you look at this sequence, this sequence is repeated from minus infinity up to infinity with those values here. And you can see that the signal, if you, you can pick any value you want, let's start from here, from zero, and see when the signal starts to repeat itself. This one here, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you start a zero and then two. So the sequence here, will be from 0 up to 6. So from 0 up to 6, you have a sequence. And now also at 7, you have a 0, then 2, 1 1.5, 1, and 0 0.5, and then two zeros, and then it will repeat itself once again. And the same here also, up to this 0. And here also, up to this zero here. So <clears throat> the sequence repeats itself. You can see that starting from a zero, then two, 1.5, 1, 1 0.5, two zeros, and then zero going from the next sequence or the next period. So our n here is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven samples. So for our, our signal is periodic. We have a periodicity for n equals seven, and this is for all n. So it goes from minus infinity up to, up to infinity. So our n here is equal to, to seven. Anyone else can also discover that. If you, you can start from anywhere you want, let's say from 1.5 and see that 1.5 up to the next 1.5, which will be from the, from the next period, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and the next 1.5 should be from the next sample. So anyway, for starting anywhere you want, you can count seven samples, and the next one will be from the, the next period. Okay, so we have a periodical sequence here with a period of n equals seven. Okay, uh, just some remarks here that we have to, to follow. The fundamental the 
fundamental period NF of a periodic signal fundamental period of a periodic signal is the smallest value of n that satisfies the periodicity equation. And the periodicity equation, this one here is this equation. Wait, we can say that, you can just remember that or notice that if you take two periods together, this is n equals 7. If you take n equals 14, and you can say that, okay, with 14 samples, the sequence repeats itself also. But 14 is not the fundamental period. 7 is the fundamental period. Okay, please be careful about that. Okay, one remark also is that the addition or the sum of two or more periodic sequences is also periodic. Okay? So the sum of two or more periodic sequences is also periodic. If we have Xa tilde of n with period Na and Xb tilde of n with a period Nb, then for y, of n tilde is equal to x a tilde of n plus x b tilde of n is periodic with a period n y equals to the least common multiple of N A and N B. L C M least common multiple. لو هم سمي بالعربي المضاعف المشترك الأصغر. Okay. The least common multiple. Okay. As a definition, the least common multiple can be found. The least common multiple of Na and Nb equals Na times Nb over the, the greatest common divisor and Nb. Gcd is the greatest common The greatest common divisor, Qasim al Mushtarak al Adam, for NA and NB. Okay. Likewise, the product of two or more periodic. sequences is again periodic 
with the same formula used for the addition or the summation. Okay, so the same formula applies here. If we have a multiplication of two sequences, then the period of the resultant will be the least common multiple of the two individual uh, uh, periods. Okay, as a small example here, if we have, let's take three sequences, and A has a period of three, we have a sequence with a period of three, we have another sequence with a period of four, and a third sequence with a period of six. So, what will be if we have XA of N plus XB of N plus XC of N. So we will add those three with those periods and we have Y of N. So Y of N will be periodic with NY equals to the least common multiple of three, four, and six, which will happen to be 12. المضاعف المشترك الأصغر لثلاثة وأربعة وستة هو 12. مش أربعة وعشرين. Okay? It's not 24. 24 is not. 24 is not an F. It's not the fundamental period. The fundamental period is the smallest value of N. So the smallest value of N is in 12, which is equal to the fundamental period of the sequence. Okay. So enough from the periodicity. Let's go to another classification of sequences. Now we will define, oh, by the way, uh, if the sequence is not periodic, then we call it aperiodic, which means that if, does, if the sequence does not, the periodicity does not apply or does not convey, convey the con periodicity condition, then we call it aperiodic, aperiodic sequence. Okay. So, okay. So let's go to energy and power signals or sequences. Okay. The total energy of a sequence X of N is defined by italic E sub X. This means that this is the energy of X, the sequence X, is equal to the summation from N equals minus infinity to infinity, the magnitude of X of N squared. The magnitude of X of N squared. Okay, so this is the definition. Please notice here that if x of n is real, then this is the square of every element inside. If it is complex, then this is the magnitude square, which is the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Please be aware of this. Okay. A finite sequence with finite sample values has infinite energy. On the other hand, an infinite An infinite sequence with finite 
sample values may or may not have finite energy. Okay. Let's see some examples and to state our point. Let's take x of n to be finite with 1, 3, 6, minus 2. And we have 0 here. Find e sub x. So e sub x is equal to the summation of x of n magnitude squared from n equals minus infinity to infinity. And this is equals to 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 6 squared plus minus 2 squared, 1 plus 9 plus 36 plus 4. So we have 4 plus 36, 40, 49, 50. So our Ex is equal to 50. So this is a finite amount of energy. This is 50 units of energy. It could be millijoules or whatever. Uh, it depends on the, the values of x of n. OK. So the finite, finite sequence with finite sample values have, has an infinite, a fi, uh, sorry, a finite sequence with finite sample values has finite, I'm sorry about this, has finite energy. Please fix this up. A finite sequence with finite sample values have finite energy. And we found this out. An infinite sequence with finite sample values may or may not have finite energy. Okay. Okay, now we will take an example for the second part here. So x1 of n is equal to 1 over n for n greater than or equal 1 and 0 for n less than or equal 0. So this sequence has 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and so on, from the positive from 1 and above, and 0 from 0 and below. So E sub x1 here is equal to summation from n equals 1 up to infinity, 1 over n squared. And actually, this example, we took it from calculus. And in calculus, it is given that the summation from n equals 1 to infinity for 1 over n squared has a finite summation, which is equal to pi squared over 6. You don't have to memorize this. We, we just get this one from calculus just to prove that this type of sequence does converge, and it has a finite amount of energy. So this is has a finite amount of energy, which is equal to pi squared over 6. OK, on the other hand, I will take another sequence that is infinite also. But so notice here that 1 over n is an infinite sequence. It's, it goes up to infinity. But still, it has a finite amount of energy. If we take the second example, where we will take x2 of n is equal to 1 over the square root of n for n greater than or equal 1, 0 for n less than or equal 0, then E of x2, the energy of the sequence, x2 is equal to the summation from n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over n, which is 1 over square root of n squared. It's 1 over n. And this one diverges up to infinity. And this one does not converge. So we took two examples. One example with infinite sequence, but has finite amount of energy. 
another example with infinite sequence and we have uh, infinite amount of energy, okay? Okay, so X2 of N has infinite amount of infinite energy, okay? So this is the first part about energy. The second part here is the average power. The average power of a sequence x of n is p sub x is equal to the limit of 1 over 2k plus 1 summation from n equals minus k up to k, the magnitude of x of n squared as k approaches infinity, as k up approaches infinity. Notice that this term actually is the energy term. So you are summing x of n from minus k up to k, from minus k up to k, you have 2k plus 1 points, actually, and you are taking this k up or approaches infinity. Okay, if the signal for a periodic sequence, so if the sequence periodic, you don't have to take this in the limit, we can find px for the periodical sequence to be over one period, one over n summation from n equals zero up to n minus one x tilde of n magnitude squared. So you, you find the total amount of energy in one period, divided by the number of samples, you get the average power in, in a sequence x of n for a periodical, periodical sequence. Okay. <laughs> Let me just wrap things up and do some uh, example on the, the power as we did for the energy. Uh, an infinite, an infinite energy sequence with finite average power, power is called power signal or power sequence. So infinite energy, finite average power, we call it power sequence. A finite energy sequence with zero average power is called energy sequence. Okay, if the sequence has infinite energy and infinite average power, then it's not, it's neither, neither or. If the sequence has infinite energy, infinite energy, plus infinite average power then the sequence is neither neither nor neither energy nor power 
sequence. It's neither energy nor average power or no power sequence. Okay, small example on the average power. See how can we find it. Consider x of n is equal to 3 times minus 1 to the power n for n greater than or equal 0, 0 for n less than 0. Okay, this type of sequence has, or let's just draw it to see some insight of the sequence. The sequence is like this. It is, starts from zero with a value of three, one minus three, three minus three, zero, one, two, three. And this continues and we have zeros here in the negative side. So it's all three or minus three values, okay? What we need to find here is, is find Px, the average power of this sequence. So Px is equal to the limit as the definition for k goes to infinity, 1 over 2k plus 1, the number of elements, and the summation from k, sorry, from n equals minus k, up to plus k magnitude of x of n squared. Now, the sequence starts from zero, so you don't have to go to the negative index. So our px, once again, is equal to the limit as k goes to infinity, one over two k plus one, and we have a summation from n equals zero up to k. So k here is still the same, because go, k goes to infinity here. We start from zero, and the value here is 3 times minus 1 to the power n. The whole thing is squared. The signal is real, so the magnitude squared is the squared of each value. Minus 1 to the power n multiplied by 2 minus 1 to the power 2n is equal to 1. 3 times 3 squared is 9, so you are adding lines. So this is equals to the limit 1 over 2k plus 1 summation of 9s from n equals 0 up to k. And this is for k goes to infinity. So you are adding 9s. How many times? You are adding 9s k plus 1 time. So these are, this summation here is adding 9s k plus 1 times, from 0 up to k. So this will be the limit 9 times k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 as k goes to infinity. And you take this in calculus, this is 9k plus 1 as k goes to infinity, k, you have an infinity of order one in the, in the numerator, infinity of order one in the denominator, so this is equals to nine divided by two, and this is equals to 4.5. So we can, we know this from calculus, and this is the answer. So if this is the case, and we have an, a finite amount of average power, the, the amount of energy is, equal to infinite amount of energy in this sequence. So this sequence is power sequence. So we have a power, power sequence. Okay. We have some other classifications. We'll do this very quick. other types of classifications. The first one 
we call a sequence is bounded if the absolute value of x of n has an upper bound, we call it beta sub x, and this one is finite, less than infinity. So this is an upper bound where beta sub x is a finite finite positive number. Okay, finite positive number. Another classification also, a sequence is absolutely summable if the sum of the absolute values of x of n from n equals minus infinity to infinity is finite, less than infinity, so finite. Okay, and the last one is a sequence is square summable if the sum of the squared values or the magnitude squared of the values from n equals minus infinity to infinity less than infinity and this is finite. Okay, we will need those in, in a while, in the next lectures, so just keep them in mind. Sequence is bounded, the boundness of the sequence is also needed. Please keep it in mind for the coming lectures. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoyed our lecture. Bye-bye.